Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are going to pick up Power BI series. We will break this into a few blocks. First, we'll go over the prerequisite and the architecture. For this, we will need SQL Server up and running. I have covered this in this video here, along with the database restore. Make sure to restore the DW or the data warehouse version of AdventureWorks database from this link here and follow the video to restore the database. We will use this database to develop a data model in Power BI. And we will explore various steps and processes of designing and developing a Power BI data model. Second item is the Power BI desktop. Microsoft has made it very easy and it is available on the Microsoft Store in Windows. Simply open up the Store app and search for Power BI. Click on the get button and once it's downloaded, the installer will pop up. We can accept the default setting and complete the installation process. I will also point out whenever I'm using Excel files and as usual, the additional files or material will be available on GitHub. Let's start by briefly covering the Power BI ecosystem and the architecture. On the left, we have sources of data. It can range from relational databases, such as SQL Server, Postgres, or an API or flat files like JSON, Parquet, CSV, or Excel. We connect to these data sources using the Power BI desktop application. And this application can be used for various functions. Uh, the data modeler can install it to model the metadata. And data analyst or business development engineer can install it to create visualization reports or dashboards. This application connects to our data sources and read data. In Power BI, there are two connection modes, direct query mode and import mode. Let's go over these. In the direct query mode, Power BI directly pulls data from the database, so there is no intermediate layer. This is a good approach if we need real-time data from our sources. We don't need to worry about the data refreshes since we are directly hitting the database. However, we are dependent on the database resources and availability. Our query can take few seconds to few minutes, depending on what other queries and processes are running on the database. If some processes were to lock a table, our query will wait in queue until that table is released. In the second approach, the import mode, Power BI ingests data locally into a database engine. Behind the scenes, the Power BI utilizes the Verdi pack, also known as X-Velocity In-Memory Analytical Engine. It is an in-memory columnar database that stores and hosts our data model. Once the data is ingested, it compresses the data so Power BI can load that in memory for on-the-fly calculations. Power BI also provides data preparation or transformation tools in the shape of Power Query. If you have used Excel and have done some data cleansing or data modeling, then chances are you have interacted with Power Query before. This tool is embedded in the Power BI, and once we load the data, all the transformation steps are performed with the help of Power Query. It helps us to clean, shape, model our data before we can report on it. Once the data is modeled, we can use it to build reports and dashboards. And in order to share our reports and dashboards with wider audience throughout our organization, we use Power BI service. It's a web service hosted on Azure, and we can use it via URL, powerbi.com. This is a SaaS-based service, and it is accessible through internet, where each organization has their own licenses. Users can log on to the service using a web browser or a mobile app, and access reports and dashboards. Also, users can develop their own content or perform ad hoc analysis in the web service. This service also has a Q&A feature where we can type our questions using natural language. QA recognizes the words we type and figures out where to find the answers. This helps us form our questions with auto-completion as well. And in some instances, some organizations has legal and compliance policies that organizations' data should not be hosted on the cloud. In that situation, Power BI offers an on-premise report server. We can develop 
our content as usual in the desktop application, but instead of publishing it to the web service, we publish that content to the report server internally hosted, and it has a web interface that allows end users to consume the content without exposing the data to the cloud. If you have worked with the SQL Server Reporting Services, or commonly known as SSRS, then the reporting server will look familiar. It is developed using the SSRS engine and it is part of the Power BI ecosystem. It is a good alternative if your organization does not want to use cloud services. However, it does not have all the features that Power BI service provides. So keep that in mind while deciding between report server or the Power BI service. And for the report server content development, we will need an optimized version of the Power BI desktop to develop content for the report server. I think that covers the Power BI ecosystem. So next we'll see how to connect to our source system and import data into Power BI. So let's go ahead and open up the Power BI desktop application and let's establish a connection to SQL Server AdventureWorks database. And if you haven't set up the database engine, then follow this tutorial and come back once you're done. Okay, we are going to click on Get Data and select SQL Server. Here we provide the server name and the database name. And uh, once we are done, we can click OK. It will bring us to the next screen where we can see the tables in this database. And uh, once we are there, uh, it will show us our database and the number of tables that are available under it. Initially, we'll focus on the following tables to keep the model relatively simple. So our data model will be based on these tables. And once we import these, we'll go ahead and define relationship between these tables. We will go ahead and select these tables and import them in the Power BI. Power BI reads the data from the source database and imports it into the Wordy Pack engine. If we hit transform, it's going to open up the Power Query that will allow us to transform or shape our data before we move on to the next step. For now, let's click on load. Power BI now will read the data from the source database and start ingesting it into its internal database. And we'll see the progress bar here on the load screen and we'll see the number of rows uh, we import from the each table. And once this process is complete, this dialog box will go away and we can see the table imported into the Power BI. This will open up the app interface with report, data, and model interface. Let's click on the data interface and view the tables we have imported. We can click on each table to get a sense of the data and uh, what columns it contains. You can go through the list and explore the data set. I think I'll stop here. And in the next session, we will focus on the data modeling in the Power BI. We will build a model based on the tables we have imported and uh, polish it, define a relationship, and cover what is Power BI data model, what is a dimension and a fact, go over the relationships and cardinalities of the relationships. And uh, we will also cover what are role-playing dimensions and how we model those in Power BI data model. This is all for now. Thank you very much for joining me. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.